Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. You are listening to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast, and today we brought on a digital marketing expert whose focus is on something other than Instagram and Facebook. Shocking. And she is making a killing with it. Multiple six figures, in fact. Her name is Rachel. I'm not going to say her last name because I can't pronounce it well, so I'll let her do that for you in a minute. But she's a Pinterest strategist who teaches entrepreneurs how to get more leads and sales using the platform Pinterest. Hey, Rachel, why don't you tell her? Why don't you tell everyone your last name that I can't say? It's Engome, but it's all good. No one can say it. (laughs) (laughs) So you guys got that Engome? You see what? Yeah, it wasn't going to happen for me. That's okay. (laughs) Um, First of all, since you work from anywhere in the hell you want, where are you in the world today? Today I'm in Chicago. This weekend I'll be in Denver. Two weeks from now I'll be in Amsterdam. I live in France. Loving it. See, guys, <laughs> it is more than possible to work from wherever the fuck you want. And I took a screenshot so you guys will see this on my stories on Instagram. She's literally doing this interview from a wine cellar wearing like a yep. parka. I- <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> like all I see are bottles of wine. And P.S. It's 930 in the morning. Thank you. Okay, it's 1130 here and have not opened a bottle yet. So we're good. (laughs) Well, I'm super excited to have you on one because I'm so tired of talking about Instagram and Facebook. And I'm very intrigued. It's basically you've niched yourself into a platform that is kind of being like almost like this treated like, you know, the bad stepchild that everyone is ignoring. So how did this come about where you even thought of focusing on Pinterest? Oh, so I built my first business in the fitness space. I had 50,000 Facebook followers, 20,000 on Instagram. And then the logarithm changed and I was pretty much screwed. And I wasn't going to go find a job because I'm an entrepreneur through and through. So I'm like, I need to figure out another way. So I started blogging and putting stuff on Pinterest. I didn't have like a huge strategy behind it, but I started noticing my traffic was increasing. And I was like, where are all these people coming from? I looked at my Google Analytics and I had 30 4,000 people coming to my blog every single month from Pinterest. And I was like, all right, I'm on to something here. And I just had other entrepreneurs asking me, Rachel, what are you doing? Can you teach me? And so last year I started teaching entrepreneurs how to use Pinterest. Wait a second. I didn't even get this from your website. And I've been following you for quite, I might've even been following you for like, since the, since the beginning, because I followed you for quite a long time. Um, I did not know that you only started actually teaching people how to do this a year ago less than a year ago oh my god it was the end of august last year it has like grown so fast my mind is blown (laughs) i mean and you're you're i mean so you guys know i mean it's she's it's she's making an impact but i'm gonna have everything in show notes she has a shit ton of awesome freebies which is part of how i found her um because I was also very intrigued by Pinterest. So I don't try to like reinvent the wheel. I find experts who know what the fuck they're doing to teach me. And I bought um, and I bought your recent uh, course, your digital course. I, I don't know what, what the name of it is. I forgot, but I bought it. It's like, awesome. I think it was like $297 or something. Pin with purpose. Yes, yeah. that one. She's Yay. Like, she's like, yeah, P.S. That's like my most famous one. OK, well, I didn't remember <laughs> the name. <laughs> but I but I did buy it. Um, awesome. So yeah, tell us how in a short period of time, how you monetize something that you, you know, became good at naturally. Gosh, um, how did I monetize? Yeah, it? how did you start making money off it? Were you like, I'm just going to teach people this and put together a course or? Yeah, so it was literally me putting together a course. And I, 
I started this business from scratch. So like I had a ton of following, like over a hundred thousand people following me in the fitness space, but nobody knew me for like business advice. So I literally started this from scratch less than a year ago. And it was me reaching out to anyone that I was a friend with on Facebook that was an entrepreneur of, Hey, can I just do a like Skype chat with you and ask you questions for market research? And I was asking them what, like, what are you struggling with? And I asked them if they use Pinterest and I, I was like, well, you're not using Pinterest. I've used Pinterest to generate over 20,000 leads for free into my business why aren't you on the platform? And that's how I was able to get my first couple of clients, my first people into my beta round of pin with purpose when I launched that at the end of August or beginning of September last year. And that's kind of how it started. And I just really focused on those people and nurtured those relationships and helped them get results. And then the next time I launched it, it grew. And then the next time I launched it, it grew even more. So you took something that you did the work, obviously, and mm-hmm. and figured it out on your own, mm-hmm. and then packaged that in a nice package and sold it. Yep. There you exactly. go. I mean, it's not <laughs> now. I mean, I just simplified the hell out of something. So I don't. That's, I, yeah. that's really it's. It sounds simple, but what's the work that's involved in that? Did you do, for example, your website all yourself? Did you put the course together all yourself? I put the course together all by myself. My website, like in the beginning of this business, I DIY'd like everything and I invested what I made back into my business. And so the first time I like I did my website all by myself, but then when I wanted to make pin with purpose, a more legit course, I invested in Kajabi and a designer and a copywriter for the next time I launched it. And so then it started to grow. And then I invested in more people to help me. So now we have a staff that actually takes care of customer service and like all these other things. Um, So I started off doing everything pretty much and then and reinvested back into my business. And that's how we grew so fast. Because what I get from a lot of um, our listeners and my followers is, you know, you they hear a lot of six figure, seven figure entrepreneurs going hire a team outsource, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, well, if you're just starting and you have no one investing or you don't have, you know, money set aside to invest in your business, you don't have money to do that. You have to do you have to do it yourself. You do. So I literally, I was doing everything. And it was so funny. I was talking to my mom a couple of months ago and she was like, wait, you have somebody editing your podcast and scheduling all your podcast interviews and doing Facebook ads for you and doing copywriting. What do you do, Rachel? And I was like, I have three hour lunches and France with my friends. And I was like, kind of kidding, but it took so much off of my plate now that I can focus on my zone of genius, which is being here with you or creating content or writing courses. So in the beginning, I did everything. And I hired somebody in the Philippines via Upwork. He was like $6 an hour. I still have him. He's amazing. But then I was able to add more legit staff to the team. Right. I mean, and did and when she's saying she hired someone in the Philippines via Upwork, that's a, you know, that's a great tip I share, you know, mm-hmm. having a virtual assistant from another country and don't feel bad like you're, you know, you're, you're almost using them because the price is so low. That is, it's all relative. That's a shitload of money to them. That's a lot for him. And I've been able to give him so much business. Like he, he loves me. <laughs> That's see, that's give that's giving back, right? Yeah. So a lot of people think, oh my God, that's like how good could someone be at six dollars? You have to understand He's, it's relative. Exactly. And because of working with me, he actually said I was able to invest more into my skill set and training. And now he actually charges twenty five dollars an hour. But it started with me at six dollars an hour. So like he's good. <laughs> that's awesome. So for People who are, uh, whether they're starting out or they have an existing business as an entrepreneur, whether it's a storefront or a service, but they really need to get in that digital marketing game, but it's intimidating as fuck to most people. Mm -hmm. Um, What would you say are some really good tips for people, you know, going into that digital world? And if they should they be putting their focus initially on Facebook or should they start with Pinterest and a blog? 
One of my biggest tips for being in the online space is to be yourself and don't be like a digital marketer. (laughs) Like if you try and show up like that, then people feel it. And so I have so many people tell me they relate to me because of how real I am. And I try to make that come across throughout everything that I do. So, I mean, I'm in a wine cellar and like I've done my challenges back here. And it was so funny when I did my last challenge, um, I had, I like, I just got my eyebrows microbladed. So they looked crazy. My foot was in a boot. I was in my parents' wine cellar and my people loved that, that how relatable I was. And so with everything that I do, I just try to be me and like, I act as if I'm helping my, like my virtual BFF. And that's who I want to work with. And it's not like I'm some marketer or whatever. Um, So that's one of the biggest things. And the second biggest thing, create content on a consistent basis. It can be on whatever platform you want it to be on. But I definitely suggest you have a blog. You need to have a home base. You don't own Facebook. You don't own Instagram. Like those like the logarithm could change or your account gets shut down. Like you just don't own it. So you need to have a blog and you need to build your email list. And Pinterest can help you do all of that on autopilot for free. So with Pinterest and um, people then, you know, would you let's say you guys, you know, you pin a picture of, you know, whatever, if you're a podcaster, you're pinning something about your latest podcast, you're using keywords. Now you want to direct them to your website. But what Mm -hmm. about these entrepreneurs new or existing who don't have a site like you did it yourself. Do you have any recommendations for like the easiest platforms? Is it Kajabi that you recommend or WordPress? So like I do recommend WordPress for your blog. If you're just starting out and you're really on a budget, Kajabi is kind of all in one. So you could have your email list and your landing pages and everything in Kajabi. So that could be a great place to start. In terms of a blog though, I love WordPress and I use Divi theme and it's pretty cheap to get started. Like buy a domain, get your hosting. Divi is I think $89. Um, So that's where I would start. And did you have like any kind of like a tech savvy background when you did all this yourself or were you like Googling everything? Googling, watching like YouTube video tutorials of how to drag and drop and how to do this. And I just kind of taught myself. So the site that we see today, is that something that you created or is this like an up level from where you were in the beginning? 95% what I created. And then Richard went in and just changed a few things. Wow. See, so it, 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 the catch is, I always like to tell people what the catch is when we simplify things. The catch is, is I'm sure you spent hours and hours and hours and hours teaching yourself and implementing it and screwing something up and fixing it. Right. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the catch is how bad you want it to you know exactly so I tell there. people most people aren't super tech savvy and they don't have that time and so I tell them you like my guy he he's charging $500 to do a website right now or less than that like start to finish and that is pretty cheap or maybe it's even $300 like he is good. Um, So if you can find somebody and get a good deal, do it just because a lot of people will be stuck on that. And they never move forward. And so I think it's worth it to do that little bit of an investment just so you can move forward. Otherwise, you're never going to get anything done. I I would agree with that. And also, um, be very mindful and do your research too. Because, you know, it's, there's a lot of people charging 2000 there's people charging 5000 and how much more do you really get for that i've seen i've seen people get screwed where they're like still paying off their website 2 years down the road um you don't need to spend that much money to get a website done you really don't yeah i mean i don't it's like she was saying being being you, the real you, and not trying to be some, you know, hypered version of you, there's already a lot of that out there. Mm-hmm. So, be, you know, be you and your site doesn't have to be like complex. Like if you go to Rachel's no. site, it's not like, I mean, it's, it's very pretty. It's pretty, it's but it's not special. like, <laughs> there's not like floating things on the screen and like crazy shit happening on it. No, I live by done is better than perfect. And so I would rather like I just got it done and then made it better as time went on. 
So when that going back to when you said like the algorithm changed on Facebook and Instagram, which by the way, guys, it's not just changed once in its lifetime. I mean, yeah, it just changed that. again recently with the, with the introduction <laughs> of IGTV. It just changed again. And, and yeah. I did a I shared with you guys on one of my lives that I lost 500 followers in one day just from that that change. So mm -hmm. when that happened and you said you like it heavily impacted your business. Yep. How did you what did you do with your mindset to process that? Because that would be like really freaking upsetting to me. For sure. I really work on my mindset a lot all the time. So I actually had a Tony Robbins coach for an entire year. Um, I've been to Unleash the Power Within, Date with Destiny, and hey. <laughs> um, and it's just something that I constantly work on. So I'm always listening to podcasts, I'm journaling or meditating or doing something just so I can be the best version of myself out there because it is so hard to be an entrepreneur. Like mentally, it's so hard and you have to be strong to survive, basically. So I've just always focused on it. So your first um, company, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was more of um, a network marketing business, yeah. right? Yep. yep. And so mm -hmm. with that, um, do you see any good tie in with network marketing and Pinterest? I mean, that's how I got a ton of leads. <laughs> like that's I've sponsored over 300 people in my network marketing company. And a lot of those people came from Pinterest. Wow. So so it's I, I don't know if we can say the name and it's not really relevant. But so you guys know, because they say network marketing now. But so you know what that is, is it's I call it residual income. It's it like, is. right. It's it, like if you like are you into oils and I love oils and yeah. you want to use the oils I have, it's like, OK, you buy them and you just buy them through me and I get a little cut of it, basically. I mean, I haven't touched that network marketing business in about a year. So like when I started this one, I cut way back on the other business and I'm still making like three thousand dollars a month with that business without doing anything. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> and what do you think? What? Well, not what do you think? You, uh, you know, you're the expert. What is it that you did on Pinterest that got those leads? And then tell me, how did you convert those leads to an actual? So sale? good. Yeah. So I like to think of it as a funnel. So you're like getting people into your funnel with your free content. So it's all congruent. Whatever you're putting on Pinterest, it's the same content that's on your blog. So if you're not having stuff. So what I did, I was pinning about keto and intermittent fasting. And my blog was used to be general health and fitness. And it was it wasn't congruent and it wasn't converting. And what I noticed was all of my posts that were getting the most traction were the keto posts. And so I just shifted my focus to only keto and intermittent fasting. So when someone came from Pinterest, they wanted to hang out and learn more from me, the keto expert. So then they signed up on my email list to get my free keto grocery list or my free keto meal plan. And from there, I could invite them into my Facebook community where I was able to build the relationship with them and run free challenges where in those free challenges, I promoted my products for my network marketing company, help them get results with the products and convert them into a distributor. So it's basically, and this was automated. <laughs> so like the emails automated, the blog post, the content, the freebie, everything is automated. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> and can you help for people who, you know, aren't tech savvy or aren't familiar with what that means? What, what does it mean to be automated with what you were just describing? that they sign up. So if someone's coming from Pinterest, this is automated because literally pins are lasting for years. Stuff that I pinned three years ago is still bringing traffic. And so if someone is searching for something on Pinterest, they come to my blog. So that's automated. They see my freebie. They sign up to get my freebie. They're getting an automatic email from that introducing myself, inviting them into the Facebook community. So then they join the Facebook community. And from there, I can build a relationship with them, add value to them, get them in a challenge, sell the products. How long would you say on average, by the time you get someone, um, someone coming from Pinterest, mm -hmm. and into your, as you called it, which it's called a funnel into your face private Facebook group? 
what would you say on average, um, how many people like, you know, is it one out of 10, one out of 20 convert into actually um, buying your your products? I wish I kept better conversion <laughs> tracking for that business. I mean, really even like an numbers. estimate, is yeah. it like 10? I mean, even 10 percent is considered like phenomenal in the digital space. So I would say between five and 10. So depending on what it is that I was selling, so I actually created a keto ebook too that sells really well still um, on autopilot from Pinterest. And so I was selling that plus the products of my network marketing company. But I liked, I love that I started doing my own thing, like creating ebooks. And I created an online course in the fitness space too, because sometimes people didn't want the products <laughs> that I was promoting and not everyone's going to want it. Right. So I was able to say, okay, you don't want this, but I have this that I can offer you too. And with, um, with network marketing and also a lot of service-based businesses, um, part of the, the time consuming factor is you have someone who's interested mm -hmm. and then it's like, then do you do a discovery call to sign them up? Never. Because that's, that's not, now you've lost that automated part. I never did. I actually had surveys on my blog or like a type form that they would fill out to apply to be on my team or to join my challenge. So that I never got on the phone with somebody beforehand. Like they filled out the survey. I would send them an email after that and then they would sign up from there. And so when they signed up for your challenge, in order to actually sign up and um, meet the requirements to be on your team, Mm -hmm. They had to, I'm assuming, buy a, some of the products, right? Yeah. To be a member of the team and to be in the challenge, they bought the products. Because the part of the challenge is using yeah. the products because that's what works is, yep. Yep. is all, the whole system together. Yep. So you've kept that automated as well. Yep. Okay. So yeah, see you guys, even for service-based businesses, whether you're doing network marketing or you're selling um, whatever it is, you're, I don't know, I you could be a yoga coach, you could be whatever. Like, do you do you do discovery calls for people to work with you one on one? Is that a different funnel system for you? In this business? Yeah. I typically don't if they request it, then I would. But most of the time, because of all the content that I put out there, people just know that they want to work with me. So they don't need that discovery call. They're just applying. They're like, I'm ready. Let's do this. Right. And those are the people that you want any, you know, anyway. Exactly. I feel like a, a, someone that wants a discovery call, they're not ready usually. So the people that have been in like my ecosystem or whatever, they're con like consuming my content. They're ready. They're like, let's do this. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with that. After 10 years of being an entrepreneur, making a lot of mistakes and mm -hmm. wasting a lot of my own time, <laughs> yeah. a lot of my own. I used to do hour long calls. No. Welcome to hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, it was, learn. yeah. and it was like, what? no, you don't have to do that. You didn't know any better. You're right. You didn't know any better. No. And that's why you're able to teach you guys. I mean, every single person on this earth, unless all you do is like, lay around and do nothing all day. Even if you play video games all day, you have something to teach. There's people who pay for that shit too. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like you, we all have mastered something more than a, most of the population where we can package it and teach it. We yep. all have. Yep. I mean, there's women who are making a killing on because they're obsessed with cleaning. And so then they find cleaning, pro you know, organic yep. cleaning products and they sell those. Yeah, you could sell garden. I mean, like, it's so crazy now with the lens that I look at the world and I'm looking at people's businesses. And when I see people that are in like a brick and mortar business, I'm like, do you know that you could make passive income by doing this, this and this? And they look at me and they're like, what? So like, I literally hired the person that did my eyebrows as a private client because she was sick and tired of trading time for money. And she was like, I need to learn how to make passive income. You need to help me. I was like, okay. Yeah, because, <laughs> you know, Warren, Warren Buffett says it best. I mean, if Every every day that you are giving yourself your actual self and you're not making passive income is another day you're going to have to work nine to five, yeah. basically. Yep. Yep. And that's not fun. So getting down to the specifics of Pinterest, what would you say are like some of the top mistakes that you see people doing regularly when they're pinning? They're not using keywords. 
And so they're just using cute words or just a regular description, but they're not using specific keywords that their ideal client is searching for. So you got to understand Pinterest is a search engine, just like a visual Google. And you got to get in the head of your ideal client and think of when they go to Pinterest, what are they searching for? And you got to use those specific keywords in your pin description, in your board titles, in your board description. It's like Pinterest is a search engine. I want to hammer that home so you understand keywords are everything. What about the images? Do you feel that there are how how intense and how amazing do the images have to be? Is it on the same level as Instagram? I mean, the images that you use on Pinterest are different than Instagram because on Instagram, I feel like it, they need to be you and your face and like professional images. And the ones that I put on Pinterest, I create myself in Canva in a minute. So like, it's totally different. I'm not using stock photos on my pins. I'm using text on them. And so it's, it's very, very different. You can literally create it in Canva in a few minutes and then you're set. Yeah. And I, I'll put the Canva link, you guys, in show notes, too. And there's a free mm -hmm. version of Canva. You don't even have to do the the pro version. The Canva for work, though, is like it's definitely worth it because you can save your brand colors and fonts in there. And it's so much faster to create awesome images then. But you can. Yeah. And, and the pro version. And here we're giving them freaking free advertising. You need to be a sponsor. <laughs> I keep telling them I need to be an affiliate. And they're like, we don't have a program yet. I'm like, come on, you guys. <laughs> yeah. The pro version also resizes all of your graphics for you in one click. Like, you know, so that's, that's what, you know, for the non techies out there, that's what I love. So if you were to say, like, what someone could take away from this and do today, if they have no, they don't even have they're like a Pinterest page, I thought that was for like, women shopping for wedding dresses. No. <laughs> so uh -uh. what would you say they could, you know, whether it's after work tonight, or today, like, what would be a good place for people to start who have not pinned with purpose, so to speak? Yeah, well, I have a free Pinterest cheat sheet that they can grab. Um, just go to pinwithrachel.com and that'll give you the tips to get started. That's what I would suggest. See, it's already all spelled out for you. See, you always go, you always go to the expert who has done all the work and has made the mistakes and done the trial and error because why reinvent the wheel? Absolutely. <laughs> like just save time. <laughs> So as far as um, how you grew your business, right, because it's really only been a year, at what point did you start outsourcing some things? So it was in January. I remember because I'm actually in a mastermind and we met at our January retreat and I told them, I'm like, I made $10,000 this month. I spent 5,000. Is that good? And they're like, that's really good. They're coming from the brick and mortar space. And I was like, really? Like, that's not that good. But they're like, you need to reinvest and hire somebody to help you. And somebody that's not just in the Philippines, like a legit English speaking assistant to help with customer service. And that's when I hired Ariana um, on our team. You probably either someone on your team spoke to her. She's what got everything set up. And her being able to take over the automations and customer service and she does everything <laughs> like that made the biggest impact. So I could literally just stay in my zone of genius and work on the things that only I can do. And she took care of everything else. How did you find your, you know, your perfect match assistant for your team? Like where, where would you advise people to maybe look? I found her on Upwork. And the thing that really stood out to me with her application was she said, like, I'll treat your business like it's my baby. Like, I totally get it. And I was like, oh, I like you. Like, I want somebody that's going to treat my business like it's her baby. Um, so I fell in love with her. And we've been working together since the end of January. Yeah, she's she's great. My coordinator, Nancy, said she's very, very professional and prompt and which yep. is not always normal. Yeah. Was it scary as hell for you to hire someone? Because that's a regular yes. expense where someone is like, you know, yes. significantly dependent on that money now. Yeah. And she was $38 an hour. So like, it was a lot. But I, was, I knew in my like, 
I've really operated my business by following my gut and I just trust my gut feeling with everything. And I just had like that feeling she's the person that I need and she's going to help me take things to another level. So I hired her and I literally told her, I'm like, let's start with 10 to 15 hours a month because I don't want to promise you anything that I can't deliver. And over time, I've added more and more hours. So we started slow, but she like she just proved herself. And I'm like, you're, I want to add more to you because you're taking over so many things and helping me grow so much faster. And I know you said a big portion of her job was to take, you know, the customer questions, customer service off your plate. So yeah. what type of customer service uh, work was weighing you down with this automated business of yours? Anytime someone has just like a question or like, I didn't get an email. Can you make sure that like they're set up or you have to check an active campaign or I didn't get access to the course and you have to go into Kajabi or something like that, where it is automated, but they just didn't get it or something like that, where they need extra help. And you were getting enough of those where you were spending hours. Yeah. And I also wanted to be on other podcasts and start pitching for that kind of stuff. So literally Ariana, she pitches for me to get on podcasts. She pitches to get other people on my podcast. She researches the person. She creates the questions. She sets up the time. I show up and I hit record. And then I pass it on to Lizzie, our team social media manager. She edits it, uploads it to Libsyn, creates Insta stories for it. Like she... Being able to do what you're like really good at and having everyone else do the rest and support you is such a good feeling. And I'm so blessed to be able to do that now. Yeah. And, you know, I know that can sound far down the road for people or even people who have, you know, maybe you you do have some people on, on your team, but you don't feel they're really lifting that much mm-hmm. weight or work off you. I just want you guys to know, like, you might not always nail it, you know, with the first few people you hire, you may have to... Mm-hmm you know, go back to the drawing board, but you've clearly found it to be a worth an investment, meaning you're making more than you're spending. Yes. You saw the dollars increase as you were able to focus on higher level tasks, right? Yes, exactly. Well, I'm so happy that you came on, even though I can't pronounce your last name. (laughs) So But that's okay, because you don't have to pronounce Rachel's last name in order to get all of her freebies. And I'm going to have, again, all those are in show notes. And her list, and I told you, I bought her course for myself. And I've, I'm a longtime entrepreneur, but I wanted my team to take a course Mm -hmm. from an expert, not to where they were, you know, they were figuring it out. That's her zone of genius. So you guys don't have to necessarily pay for a course if it's not in the budget, but go check out her freebies and get yourself started and play with it and see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? You get more leads yeah, for free. (laughs) I mean, Pinterest is free. And she just told you about her freebie, like, you know, get started guide. And she has other freebies too. So You don't have anything to, you have nothing to lose to try it. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Rachel, and sharing all your awesome tips. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) Thanks. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.